and I'm recording now. So I'll just do a countdown. All right. Three, two, one. Hey guys, what is going on? You know, I didn't think this day would come back. You know, we we had some time alone. We had some uh some things to do on our respective timelines, different universes to cross, different arcs to achieve. But here we are. Back. We've come home. We we've come home just like Spider Man. Oh, and it feels good. It feels grand. So from that, I just want to let y'all know, my name is Krosama, and my co-host... And my name is Second Soundwave. Mm, that feels good. That feels good Yeah, to say. it's been too long. I haven't said those words in like four months. <laughs> People are like, oh my god, he has risen. I'm back again. You know, but <clears throat> we, got a special, we got a special day today. This is, uh, you know, not only the, re- the great return... Of America's favorite bird related podcasts. But this is also going to be Only America's? Yeah. I mean I can't imagine another I think you mean the world's favorite bird podcast. I don't know. Argentina, I think they got a pretty good one. Called Birds in a Forest. I'm dead fucking serious too. But we got a special guest. We got. <laughs> oh my god, damn it! <laughs> Let me finish the introduction. And yes, I. By the way, that typing was me fact checking him saying that there was an Argentinian <laughs> podcast called <laughs> "Birds in the Forest," and I don't, I don't fucking know why I thought it Does did, but it doesn't. Exist? I feel absolutely fucking stupid for thinking it did. <laughs> oh my god. I, I was. I would honestly be pretty flabbergasted if it fucking All existed. Right. <laughs> I fucking thought it into existence. All right. Anyways, we got a special <sighs> guest today. We got um, the subject matter expert, the the SME of Macross, which is the uh, the topic of today, and that's going to be Mister Forge Horizons. Hello, I know. <laughs> Everything you want to know about all of the idols except for Macross 7 because I don't like that one. Fair enough. Fair enough. I haven't even seen it. Guys, before we get too deep into the main topic, I just have to mention that there is a page on Wikipedia that literally listed, lists every single species of bird in Argentina. <laughs> like everything. Because <laughs> Argentina is like the capital for birds, <sighs> man. Is it not? I guess. There are a lot of birds. 1,000 confirmed species. Yeah. Like, I didn't I didn't pull the Argentina shit out of my ass. I, I just, I didn't know if there was a podcast in Argentina. <laughs> well, I mean, you did. You can have a whole ass Pokedex just for Argentinian birds. There you go. Yeah. It's like, it's fucking bliss. But I don't think, I don't think they have crows. I don't think crows exist in Argentina. Uh, let me do a quick control F. What? No. Okay. Br- Black crowned night heron. Well, while two S is uh, researching crows in Argentina, um, want to mention the sponsor? Red Ruff Fruit Crow. Huh? Red Ruff Fruit Crow. Nah, that's that's. It's an Argentinian crow. Okay, that's like the black sheep of the crow family. Actually, it's the red sheep of the crow family. They're all the black sheep, technically. Oh, okay. They made a Yu-Gi-Oh card after this one. That's fair. But yeah, um, <laughs> before we get into the you know freaking birds um <laughs> want to mention the sponsor for today's video which is newtypehq.com and if newtypehq.com if you want i mean y'all don't have to but i highly encourage you to do it go ahead and put that slash then put that crosama so that way on your first purchase my lad get 10 percent off and if i if my code and then on your second purchase use newtype.com I'm sorry, newtypehq.com slash second sound wave for 10% off your second purchase. Exactly. And on your third, put in newtypehq.com slash forged horizons. You won't get anything, <laughs> but, page is but you'll see a cool 404 a page. page. <laughs> <laughs> you yep. will. Say, like, that's a 404 right there, baby. But, 
All right, so we got all the introductions and everything out of the way. Topic is Macross, and you know what, Forge? I, w I want you to take us on a journey right now. Uh, where would you like to start? You want to start from the I beginning? I think all good stories start at the end, and then we're going to work our way back to the beginning. Okay, so you want to talk yeah, about Yeah, where are we Delta at right now, now with Macross? Um, so currently there is a movie coming out later this year that is the sequel to the theatrical retelling of Macross hmm. Delta. So it's essentially, do you, like, do you remember Love was a theatrical retelling of fucking the original SDF Macross and this is a theatrical retelling of nice. Delta. And that's coming out this year? I don't. Yeah, it's coming out this year. I don't know exactly mm. when, but this is the first Macross thing I want to say since like 2018 okay. or so, in terms of like actual animated mm. content. I was under the impression it was pretty dead at this point. It feels like it's dead. <laughs> it pretty much is. At least it gets more than Metal. Wow. Ones. I feel like outside of Delta, I haven't really seen anything Macross related for the last decade. Um. Frontier is pretty popular still. Was yeah. that recent though? That was like 2012. Oh, huh? uh, that's two thousand. No, that's earlier, like 2006, um, 2008. Yeah. Oh boy. I mean, it doesn't get things very mm -hmm. often, but when it does get shit, it's bangers. So it's pretty much just like, um, I mean, it's like most good franchises, like LBX and all that. Like, they don't get talked about, and then randomly something will come out. Pretty much, uh, in, well, at least in terms of the Western side, like, it's super fucking popular in Japan, like, almost every single, uh, idol group or whatever that's come out mm -hmm. of Macross is still doing, like, live tours and shit nice. to this day, so, like, Firebomber, uh, Main, who's Cheryl Gnome in Macross Frontier, she's still doing stuff, uh, Valkyrie, which is Macross Delta's group. They're doing a concert tomorrow, hmm. I think. So, it's, like, in terms of Japan, it's still really popular. Well, I mean, uh, that's, I think that's just how it, it always is. Because, I mean, the chick that sung the um, Angel's Thesis, I mean, she's still out there clapping cheeks and shit. Yeah. I, I suppose she is. Uh, I don't know what else they've done, but... They've probably yeah. done something. I mean, I just know about the choir people that did. Oh no, that old lady's still doing it. But I mean, that's good though. I mean, it's always it's always nice to have a fandom, you know, still at, at least get something, you know, whether it is just a compilation movie or you know, a couple of model kits here and there. I mean, we, we need we need something. I mean, it's it can't be considered a compilation movie. It's completely oh. different. Like, it completely changes up plot points and all that stuff. So, like, rebuild. Stuff. So, so like, it's like Zeta, a new translation. Kind of like, yeah. It's like that, except it's all brand new animation, and they, it's mm. it's not shit. So, Zeta, a new translation with effort. Uh, Pretty much, gotcha. yeah. Cool. And Wes Hazel's. Well, I mean, that's a pretty, uh, pretty low bar to climb under. <laughs> Well, that's true, but still a bar. And if it can be climbed under, somebody will do it. So we got Delta, and that's pretty much the only animation, right? For In terms of stuff recent. that's come out recently. Like, Delta, the main series was 2016. And then I got the movie adaptations starting in 2018 and now 2020. At least they're, they're still pumping out model kits. Like, I mean, not like really that much, but uh, you got a lot of the Max Factory taking the helm on releasing products because they're always putting something out. Whether it's like, yeah, they with the VF one, and then they're working on a 20. Well, even just right the characters, now. they always put out those little like character model kits, the statues. Oh yeah, I've been wanting to pick up a few of those. Oh, really a, nice. oh man, like 
when I was out shopping yesterday, that's all I seen is just there's a whole bunch of them. I don't, I'm like they all all the girls look the same. The orange one looks like the pink one. Pink one looks like the purple. I can't tell the difference. So it's more like people. As out of that or frontier because it definitely ain't all anything right. from plus. It's not the original series. Yeah, um, well, there's only two main girls in Frontier, so if you want, we can just jump straight into Frontier, considering there's not that much to talk about when it comes to Delta, apart from it being an actually mm-hmm. good series. All right, yeah. I know Crow won't watch it, though. I'll, I'll watch it eventually. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to stick with the entire series, because if the first, like, five episodes don't captivate me, then I'm turning it off, but I, I usually give a lot of animes, like, it's due diligence, like, you know, it's it's time. No, I just know that you're not going to like the if, music. Yeah, if I don't like the music, I'm not going to stick with it. Well, off to another series you won't enjoy the music from, Macross mm. Frontier. So, once again, there are two theatrical movies that came out for it that are a retelling, a very loose use of that word, because it completely changes the ending. I'm pretty sure it changes some character face, mm. stuff like that. And once again, good music, good movie. What else could you ask for? I mean, I don't really does it have know. good mech design? Uh, it has the same mechs from proper Macross Frontier. So, like, you have the VF-25, oh, yeah. the YF-29, stuff like that. Yeah, you can't go wrong with 25. So, nothing. 25 mm-hmm. is pretty sexy. So I've been doing some wiki research while you guys have been talking just so I can somehow grab a handle onto this conversation and put in some (laughs) words of wisdom. And in the process of my research, I've discovered that there is a side story manga to Macross 7 called Macross 7 Trash. Hmm. Oh, I agree with that statement. I figured you would. (laughs) Is it really that bad? Um, the thing about Macross 7, let's just skip right there. Because we're already on mm. the topic of it. And I figure trashing on something is probably more interesting than just informing. So Macross 7 is a 50 episode mm. anime. It has an unlikable main uh, unlikable main protagonist in Basara Neki. He is... <sighs> so imagine like a Japanese kid at mm. the arcade, right? They hop on the DDR machine, and they're just going to fucking town. Now, imagine that a huge, like, alien invasion comes, and that kid on that dance machine, the dance machine just lifts out of the fucking floor into a fucking uh, YF-19. The fuck? That looks like a fucking Transformer with a face. And there you have your man just fucking guitar heroing his plane. He doesn't kill anything, really. He's against war. I don't think he even really has weapons on his plane. He just has amplifiers, and he just plays his guitar to control his plane. And he's really fucking annoying. (laughs) That sounds actually pretty wild, to be honest. I was about to say that sounded kind of good, the way you described it. It's... (sighs) It's really fucking weird. I don't... I don't like Basara. Uh, he's just, he doesn't change, and also it's like 25 episodes too long. They There's, like, the start of the series is slow, then the midpoint is slow, at the end it starts to pick up, but overall it's it's just really eh. And I don't like mm-hmm. the music, but... I thought you There's a couple I thought you was songs. telling me that the music from Seven Slaps. Uh, that would probably be chef okay. yeah because someone was like you gotta check it out and i think i put on a song and i'm like what is this garbage it's like fireball or something yeah you put on the one fucking slow song from the well, entire if, show. if it slaps every song should slap well that song is probably my favorite song from <laughs> macro seven uh so that shows us our differing tastes in music well, right there if i if i present you the album to macross plus you you are going to be in a hallucinated like state of just euphoria and amazement. That's what Plus delivers. 
I don't really remember. Plus, oh, to be baby. honest with you, you need to rewatch. It's only four episodes. I haven't watched it. Yeah, I haven't watched it in like eight mm. years. Probably. It honestly holds up well because I watched it earlier this year, and I was like, "Oh, this is fantastic." Yeah, I like. I know that it's gonna be good. Like, I was just rewatching uh, Macro Zero, which is, I guess, a spiritual prequel. It has similar tones to Zero, as in it doesn't really focus on the music as much. It focuses more on the proper military mm-hmm. stuff. That was good. So I'm thinking Plus is probably going to be even better. What? I just got to get around to watching it again. Well, I know with like the anime streaming sites being pretty much sniped at this point it might be a little bit difficult to find it but if you torrent or something like that which i don't i don't encourage law enforcement um but if you do happen to find it yeah it's definitely a cop yeah i i agree with that i would buy it legally but (laughs) good luck with that um but there are more anime streaming sites that will ever be able to be taken down by the u.s government mm-hmm. so wasn't it japan that took it down it's the One japanese government that cares about it the u.s doesn't give a shit yeah. well i think it was the u.s government that ordered uh nine anime no, that was clothes, japan. wasn't it i'm pretty sure was it oh. well they failed <laughs> there's a fucking lot of them <laughs> oh yeah it's never gonna end it's like cockroaches. First they take down my hentai haven. Then they take out my damn anime stream. Hentai sites. haven came back though. Oh it did? It's not but, but it's completely legal mm. now. So Is it? Yeah, like all of the shit on there is like properly licensed. Interesting. So they don't huh. get everything anymore. So that's Oh why... whoa, yeah, they completely overhauled it. What the heck? Like, I remember after it came back, there was a short period of time where it went back to normal, just with no new updates, and yeah, they've completely overhauled it now. This is nothing like it. Yeah, it's kind what of like when uh, Faku went legal. Mm. Kind of. Um... I actually haven't. Yeah, this is uh, weird. Hentai Haven in who, who knows how long. Yeah. It's only been like maybe 15 minutes for me. You need to find some better sites, my man. H anime is the way to go. I agree with that. That's the only site worth dropping some cash on. Oh, drop! No, I don't drop cash on that shit. Well, I, it, you don't need to drop cash on it. You don't need it's to. It's a free site. It's mm-hmm. a free site, but Has you get to. like unlimited like downloads and like 1080p shit. You know, your boy wants to watch it crisp. <laughs> that is true. You true. gotta watch it crisp. But moving on from the hentai, because I mean that—that's a whole topic in itself. We, we could talk about that for two hours. Yeah, easily. I mean, we could also talk about Argentinian birds for two hours. <laughs> we could talk about Macross for two hours. We could just string this all together and make one big six-hour podcast. Uh, oh, sure, I, we could. Oh, I gotta—I gotta eat my uh, buffalo chicken salad though. I can't—I can't be on for two hours. <laughs> uh, I but, got. We all got places to be eventually, just mm-hmm. not right now. Yeah. But 2S, you, you said you've seen yes. the original series? I saw Do You Remember Love, which was the movie edit of the original series. So what... what... Um, I kind of half-watched it while I was also talking with you guys on Discord. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a weird movie. Um, I didn't really get all of it. Um, it was decently well presented. I had a couple people tell me that it wasn't like adapting the full story of the show Uh um but it felt pretty complete as i was watching it like i think they did a good job of making it feel like a full story um it was kind of weird and i didn't really like it but i don't know i can't really say that much about it i was not particularly impressed by it it's a matter of do you remember love requires prior knowledge of some events from the original because like it just starts you off in the middle of things. You don't know who the enemy is. You don't know See, who you're See, it following. wasn't that I didn't understand it. It's that I didn't think it was particularly good, I guess. Like, it was just weird. 
Like, there was no, like, nothing where I was like, this doesn't make sense because there's no context. It's like, this doesn't make sense because it's weird. I guess I can believe that. Like, do you have a specific example of that? I don't know. The whole the whole movie was just weird to me. I didn't I didn't like it. <laughs> All right. I can't really put it into words. I just finished it, and I was like, "Yep, that was a movie. I didn't really like it that much." Um, I haven't really processed why I didn't like it. I could probably watch it again and tell you more specifically, but. At the time being, I can just say that I wasn't super impressed by it. I'm still probably going to watch Plus, though, because that does look kind of cool. You should watch Plus? Plus. I would honestly say Plus is probably the most different of the Macross series. Because it, it doesn't focus on, like, the alien aspect of, like, the giants and all that. Whatever, whatever the hell they're called. I yeah, I wasn't expecting it to focus that much on the aliens. I was expecting, like, half idol anime, half mecha anime. Not, and I got, like... 10% mecha anime, 10% idol anime, 80% weird alien stuff, <laughs> and that was not really my thing. Yeah. If you yeah, want the 50-50, then you gotta watch, like, uh, Delta or Frontier. Mm -hmm. Delta and Frontier seems like it pushes so much on the idol stuff more than anything. Oh, that, trust that could be me, just 7 does it way harder. 7 does it way harder. Mm. Like, when it says 7, it's like 70% music. There's... And it's always the same fucking song. It's like one song. Mm. And it's infuriating. They just needed more music. See, that's, what, that's why I sent for uh, Plus. Because it's almost... It's basically just Top Gun in four episodes. Well, I mean, Top Gun stole from, the, from Macro, so... It did? You uh, got thoughts so on that? Um, I know that Shoji Kawamori mentioned it in an interview. He is the creator of Macross. He's mm. had a hand in every series. He designed all of the mecha, and I think he actually designed Optimus Prime? Gen 1? Mm. Um, let's see if I can bring something up on that. I can hear 2S fact-checking right now. No, I'm just closing the 14 different types of Argentinian birds I had open in different tabs so I could fact check him on the Optimus Prime design. Um. But while they're researching that, I just want to let y'all know the YF-19 is by far the best aircraft of all Macross, easily. Not the Macross 7 variant, I can tell you that much. Are you talking about the... Um, is it the YF-31 or VF-31? Uh, no, the VF... Or 29. The VF-19 Excalibur, I think, is the one oh, from okay. 7. The complete version. Yeah. What was the name of the Japanese guy you were talking about? Uh, Shoji Kawamori. Shoji Kawamori. Yes, yeah, so he made he developed the Diaclone mecha the Transformers were based off of. Hmm. And also Jetfire from Gen One of Transformers. From Macross, yes, because Jetfire was just a Macross. Yep. Like no changes, just a Macross. I think toy. that they might the have line. given it slightly different paint. Well, that's because of licensing. Maybe. I don't know. People just like to steal from Macross and not give, and not give any credit for it. Well, I'm I'm sure we'll get to that later on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure Hasbro got sued over the whole Jetfire thing, and that's why they changed. They made like a new character in the show called Skyfire that was like completely redesigned. That was sort of supposed to be Jetfire, but it was changed enough that it didn't really look like a Macross anymore. Except it kind of did. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that it probably wasn't the Japanese who did that. I don't know for sure. Uh, yeah, like... Jetfire was just straight up, you know, Macross and then Skyfire. Yep, it's exactly what I thought it was. Harmony Gold. We'll definitely get into that. 
That's a yeah. whole ass thing. I could make a three hour video in the about just that. TV show though, Skyfire was redesigned to not look quite so Macrossy, but he still kind of did. Mm-hmm. God, I liked him like that. Oh God, that the, the the newer version that looks so bad. The new um, Jetfire with the fucking face. I cannot do faces. Oh. I mean, yeah, the, the faces are kind of weird, but I think the design overall looks, like, much better than just VF, you know, one. Nah. Hard pass on that one, Chief. Mm. At least I ain't the Bayformers one. Oh? Um, what did the Bayformers Starscream look like? Trash. Bayformer Starscream was the, like, kind of gray Dorito. And then uh, Bayformer's Jetfire was the SR-71 that turned into the old man with the cane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, my favorite part about Macross Mecha is that they're first designed as a jet. And then from there they go like, okay, how can we make this jet into this? And then from there they just yeah, I could see work that. out how to get everything to like line up properly. And that's why the transformations are always so clean. Like on the YF-19, when that thing's fully transformed, you can't even tell that there was a plane there. Right, they start as a, they start as a plane and then they kind of work their way out from there instead of going the Gundam route of, let's make a cool-looking mecha and then lie it on its face. Mm. Yeah, like the uh, VF-1, it, admittedly in its transformed mode, it does kind of look like a slice of pizza with some limbs. But it has its charm, but when you look at, like, the YF-19, the VF-25, the VF-31, they they don't even really resemble their transformed modes at all. Not, not even close. It's, like, shocking how clean it is, as opposed to, like, looking at Transformers or whatever. And on the bottom side, you can see, like, half of the, you can see their dick hanging out. Mm -hmm. or not always. Most of them take the Macross route. Unless it's like a car or something, in which case, who cares if you can see robot parts on the bottom? You're not going to be seeing the underside of the car. Uh, yeah, I would say the cars are the uh, like the vehicles are fine with like the kibble underneath, but the uh, aircraft, I hate it. Like, if it's like Starscream, um, the um, masterpiece one in particular, it looks horrendous underneath it. And it's like I want to, you know, display mine in the air on a, at an angle to where you are going to see the underside of it, but. It's going to look like just nasty. Whereas if you look at a VF from underneath when everything's all transformed, you can't see anything. Like a, it just looks like a plane. plane. Yeah. The only thing is like the, the legs still kind of like look like legs that are connected to thrusters. Kind of? I'm, um, I'm looking at my VF25 right now and it's like, it's still obviously legs, but that's that's the only worst part. I can see where you're coming from. That depends on... The model, because, like, the YF-19, they don't really look like legs. They kind of... No. They very much just look like intakes that lead to the proper jets. And then mm -hmm. that's that. But for the YF, or for the VF-25, sorry. Yeah, I can definitely see where you're coming from. That's just, like, the design overall. Like, I, I know not every uh, Macross uh, aircraft is going to have that kind of, you know, kibble or um, that look. Yeah. That's just how things go in general, though. Like, as mm. another thing that I really like about Macross is, like, you look at the VF-1, and then you look at the next thing that would have come sequentially, which is the YF-19. You can definitely mm. see proper advancement there. And then from the YF-19 to the VF-25, see even more advancement. It's like a proper tech tree that they're just taking things that work, cutting things that didn't. Like, in Gundam, you have the RX-78 too, And then you have something mm. that's like it in the Mark II. But then you have the thing that's better than it being the Zeta that looks... Like, where the fuck did they take anything from the RX-78 besides the, um, color scheme? 
Well, the Zeta was designed by a completely different person. It was person, designed though. by a completely like, different Like, in-universe. It had nothing to do with the RX-78. Yeah, but, like, in the Camille's real thing world, that he was working on. if you look at a plane developed in Russia, the U.S. will sometimes take prompts from it and incorporate some of those things into their designs. Like, it's just or, constant development. Well, it's funny you mention that, because one of the things I noticed um, back when I got my Re-100 Bawu is that the Bawu looks an awful lot like the Zeta Gundam, kind of like it's Neo Zeon's version of the Zeta Gundam made a few years after the Zeta Gundam. Yeah. But it's very, very common for enemies to take designs from, you know, their um, their enemies and counterparts. Like, China, a yeah, lot especially. of China's um, aircraft are heavily taken from leaked imagery and leaked um, designs of, you know, U U uh, United States aircraft. Especially when in Gundam, basically everything's made by Anaheim Electronics anyways. Yeah. So it's like the same people working on everything. They're just the middleman. They're like, you want this? Cool. We don't care about your political position. <laughs> Pretty much. We will sell mobile suits to actual terrorists. Mm -hmm. I just like the feeling like of proper progression that you get. Because, okay, how long would you estimate is a mobile suit's lifespan in Gundam? Oh, that's something yeah. that annoys me so much. That's the turnaround speed for those things is like so how stupid. long it's un, was it's, the GM used? Probably only every a mobile suit year. seems to have like a six month lifespan before it gets replaced by some new thing. Yeah, in Macross you have the VF one seventy one that was first seen in Frontier, and then seven years later, they're still fucking using it in um, Delta because. You don't just get rid of something that expensive that quickly. You can't just mm -hmm. keep pumping out new stuff. And it's still one of the highest performance things. Like the F twenty two was designed how many years ago? And are we did we just scrap that after like six months and go to the F twenty three? I wanna say it was like late nineteen eighties, but I'm not sure. No, it's gotta be more I think than that, it's right? early two thousands. Okay, the last F-22 was delivered in 2012, um, but the first one was developed in... Oh, wait. In 1981, the U.S. Air Force identified a requirement for an advanced tactical fighter to replace the F-15 Eagle. Um, so they started development in the 80s. Um, production started in 1996. Production and development. Yeah, so it was in development for a long time, but it started in the late 90s. Yeah, and it's still being flown today because it's best in class in literally everything. I don't mm -hmm. think that a single one has ever been shot down. But this is only due to limitations on costs, uh, labor work. Also, we're not actively at war, True. which is kind of a big part of why that's not, why we're not seeing well, like a dozen new aircraft each year. Well, we're at war. We don't really have a need to well, innovate. Not not war per se, but we're at um, what's the what's we're at world proper policing. terminology? Yeah, put put it like yes, that. Yes, but we're not actively in a conflict with another country that puts us at a very high risk of losing our own country and would force us okay, to need to innovate. Okay, have you launch, we, launch the attack nuke at Russia? I want mobile suits. <laughs> it's like we we definitely are, but the the battle stage isn't on isn't in air. Like, that's not the battle stage for our current war. It's pretty much online. True. Yeah. Because like, that's why we don't do tanks anymore. Like, So we don't need Macross, we need Gridman. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, I think idol groups could solve everything. <laughs> With the power of love and friendship. I thought Baby Metal would have been that, that group. I thought wrong. Oh, they're going to have a comeback. <laughs> Are they even still a thing? Hell yeah, uh, one of the members uh, left and they replaced. Yeah, they her, probably got too the old. Other two... <laughs> I thought that meme died out. Fourteen years old. Get her out of here. <laughs> She's almost twelve. <laughs> I don't understand Japanese idol groups. It's like the whole culture is really fucking weird. Oh, absolutely. What, like the live action ones? I don't even pay attention to that shit. Yeah, only real people watch fucking uh, Zombieland Saga and Macross. That's where <laughs> we get our idol stuff. 
Uh, most of my auto stuff com- comes from Kamen Rider at this point. Yeah, because you're a fucking degenerate. I am. If it's not a VTuber, I don't even care. <laughs> uh, hey, some VTubers did sing Lion, which is the opening from Macross Frontier. God, mm. bringing it back. Uh, it's the whole thing about idols and Macross is that the series over time got more and more focused on it. So, like, I wouldn't describe Seven as an idol show. Because, Mm -hmm. like, maybe it's just me, but, like, when I see a bunch of... It's more akin to a proper band. Because, like, when I think of idols, I think of, like, a bunch of girls on, on stage not playing actual instruments. They're just singing. They have the people in the background yeah. playing the instruments. Seven, it's a full band. Everybody's actually playing instruments, stuff like that. But it has more. It's more music focused than any of the other series. Delta is like still has a lot of music, but it's always accompanying like the fight scenes and stuff. Usually, it's not on its own unless it's like character development or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Frontier, it's uh, just kind of everywhere, to be honest. Mostly in battles, but I'd say Frontier is probably the most action-heavy of the Macro series. You can't go wrong with that. No, you really can't, especially when it's like movie-quality animation. Mm-hmm. It's really good. So, it, it's... Frontier is the one that has like five different v, uh, VF25s, huh? There's like different colors. Uh, yeah. God, what are they? There's the um. Well, I know the characters. I can't remember the uh, numbers off the top of my head. I know that the twenty-five. Like Siegfried. No, that's that's Delta. Oh, okay. Um. There's the twenty-five F, which is Altos. There's the twenty-five S, which is Ozma. The 25G, which is Michael, and then there's Luca. And I'm pretty sure that he's the last main dude. That's an actual pilot. Mm. 31s are from Delta, which has Delta Flight, which is the gotcha. five or four person team. I, I do want to watch it because like the more the more I kind of just like look at the suits and just the the overall animation it, it looks good it is good it's just a matter of if you <sighs> Macross is one of the series where I will say if you don't like the music there's a good chance you're not gonna like the series because it is mostly a good amount of music so I'm gonna mention a name that's probably gonna make a lot of people cringe. But in Robotech, yeah. I think there's original music in there, yeah, right? Yeah, it's all original. Man, what fucking timing that is. <laughs> I was just about to oh. mention that uh, Do You Remember Love is actually not my only interaction with Macross because I also played the crap out of this game as a kid. Dude, I played the living shit out of Battle Cry. Right? It was fantastic. And honestly, looking at that video, it still looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like, that cel-shaded art style is kind of timeless. Yeah. It was just a solid, like, you know... It was actually a two-player game, huh? They had co-op. Only thing I hated about it was, like, the escort slash defense missions where you'd have to keep, like, some fragile-ass building from getting destroyed. Yeah. Those were so dumb. It, it was funny. I looked at a newer uh, Macross game. It was probably, like, one of the Deltas or, or Frontier. But it kind of looks a lot like um, Battle Cry, and it had, like, the same kind of thing, like, protect the building, protect the city. I was like, oh, oh yeah, those yeah, were uh, Vita that's, games. That's not I think. fun. Yeah. yeah. But any game where you have to defend something else that sucks at defending itself is that's super the lame. worst mm-hmm. mission in or, uh, or, Ace Combat Seven. Or uh, escort missions. Oh yeah. 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 Same shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, but what I was uh getting at with um. Robotech is like they have original music 
and I was listening to a lot of it, and they pretty much slap. Like, um, look up. Like that's probably my my favorite of uh, any song outside of you know plus. But from all the songs I've heard from the different um, seasons of you know Matt Cross and Robotech, I would say Look Up is definitely one of the best. So it's like if if I can expect that kind of level of of music quality from the other you know later seasons, I mean I'll definitely watch it. Well, it's just a matter of Robotech is a western thing so it's a lot of western music that's designed to appeal to uh what's the proper way to say it uh people like you normies (laughs) wow yeah just coming out with the with the disrespect all right See, right now, the only Robotech music I'm seeing is the opening, and it kind of just sounds like a royalty-free yeah, version of the really Superman theme. Good. The opening yeah. is really shit. No, um, look Up, like, I think it's called just Look Up, Look Up is a song. But that song slaps. Like, I'm in the gym working out to that shit. Hopefully, two S is, is to, listening to that amazement. I'm listening to it right now. Yes, it, it has like that like retro synth vibe to it. Yeah, it sounds cool. And it's like a, a few Ooh. other songs from Robotech, uh, Robotech that has like the same kind of. Oh feel. yeah, this is nice. This is good shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to this later. Mm-hmm. I won't deny that Robotech's music is good. I don't hate Robotech for being a show. I hate everything that's come after it. Oh. Uh-huh. Like, it, it's definitely done a lot of good. I will say that. It's just a matter of, does the good outweigh the bad? Mm-hmm. I kind of look at Hell it... no. I kind of look at it as, like, the same with Power Rangers. Like, Saban wanted to bring Power Rangers, you know, to the West... Um, I want to assume that um, Harmony Gold wanted to do the same thing, but obviously over time they it was just completely mismanaged. Yeah, the but person I, who I did bring so uh, fun fact. It over. Um, did you know that Ooh. before Saban? Oh, go ahead. You can go ahead, big boy. You want to finish the thing you were saying, or should I finish what I was going to say? Oh, okay. I was going to let you say that before, actually, many years before Saban successfully brought over Power Rangers, the first attempt at bringing over Sentai was actually by Stan Lee. Hmm. Oh, uh, Mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Not just that, he was going to bring over, I believe it was Dynaman, over to the U.S. Because that Spider-Man thing was supposed to be a collaboration both ways. Mm -hmm. So Toei was going to do a Spider-Man show, and in return... Stan Lee was going to adapt a Toei series for America, but that side never happened. Oh. Instead, we just got the best Super Sentai show. But even that uh, Super Sentai show was um, like a compilation of, of other seasons later on. Because the White Ranger Which one wasn't are you talking about the White Ranger wasn't in. Oh, you're talking about original Power Rangers? Y- yeah, yeah, they like they put together like three different shows to make that. Yeah. It's like the fucking uh, Power Rangers yeah. song. Oh that, yeah, that's iconic. That slaps. Although, I kind of lost my love of it when for pretty much the entirety of the 2010s, every single Power Rangers series just used some remix of the original theme oh, really? instead of actually coming up with something new. Oh, I now, like as soon as Saban the got, so. got the license back from Disney in 2010, they just ran the theme into the ground by using the same shit for every single mm-hmm. show. Because Mighty Morphin was like their biggest seller ever, and then uh, Turbo came out and it was like trash, uh, and then it kind of had like a um, a roller coaster effect, you know. Like I think In Space was, I remember coming back to the franchise when In Space came out, or Space Force, whatever. In Space was like the end of that like original storyline, and then they finally decided they needed to actually make you know a refresh of the show every single year so that they could keep up with the Sentai and not have to hack everything together into the same continuity. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I mean, that's what makes the most sense. One thing that was pretty crazy... Okay, so never mind. Yeah, we should get to... back on topic. <laughs> We're getting way too far into okay. this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, was, so going I back to the I we were going to talk about the Argentina Robotech birds. Thing, the... We could talk about Argentina birds. <laughs> we could talk about the Argentinian birds. That would be a fun topic. I don't know what they are. You guys talk about Robotech. Road road I'm going to lay some Argentinian well... bird facts on you when you're done. <laughs> All about it. Okay. So, the creator of Robotech, well, I guess I can't really say creator because... The compiler of Robotech. Um, The person who brought Macross over. Yeah. The person who brought it over really actually had a love for Macross and all of Mm -hmm. the other series that he brought over. The original plan with it was to only bring over Macross because he liked it so much. But then the cable networks were like, there's only 36 episodes here. We need like mm. at least 50 to be able to run it. So he just brought over a couple other series, and that's why you get Robotech Series 1 and then the Series 2 and Series 3 or whatever just tossed in there, which are objectively not as good. Um, and then basically what happened is it got made... It introduced people in the West to the whole anime thing to some degree, because before that, I'm pretty sure it was mostly, like, all of that chud shit, like, the Flintstones. That's Mm -hmm. what they were playing back then, right? (laughs) And, um, yeah, pretty much they brought it over. Then later down the line, Harmony Gold, they were like, you know what? You can bring the original, because they hold the rights for the original Macross. But then as soon as they tried to release anything else in the U.S., they were just like, Hey, did you give us your permission? (laughs) Did you get our permission to do this? And, like, Studio Nue, who's the people who make Macross, they were just fucking confused. Because, like, we made this. Why can't Mm -hmm. we release it? And then Harmony Gold is just like, nah, you can't do that. That's crazy. You gotta pay us. And they're still doing that to this day. That's the reason why it's so small in the West. Because most people in the West are only familiar with uh, Robotech. So they got that, and then Harmony Gold is just like, well, we're only going to allow Robotech. And then it came out that supposedly... um, All of the, like, proper story creators and stuff like that of Macross were never informed of the deal. So, all of the people that were actually making it didn't approve of it being sold to do anything with it. The studio above them sold the rights to it, like, pretty much behind their backs. And they only found out about it years later after being told about it. And they are really not fond of its existence they consider it pretty much pirated i mean kind of yeah they got screwed over pretty hard and that's why we need to jump through hoops to get even a dx chogakin figure or that 120 scale Mm -hmm. plamax vf1 because like if harmony gold knew that gundam planet was gonna release that they would have stomped mm-hmm. on it. They would have stomped out real quick. But Harmony Gold, I guess they just didn't care, or Gundam Planet actually paid up to mm-hmm. use whatever, and that's why the price was a little bit higher than retail. I kind of wonder the, the whole licensing, know. because it's, it's Ma- Max Factory is putting out the product. So it, it's like, do, do, does Harmony Gold really have any kind of say if... Uh, I don't know, it, it, it seems like a weird licensing ordeal. It is a very weird licensing ordeal. I can tell you that for the longest time, Harmony Gold was trying to block Transformers from releasing in the United States because they had a a visual comparison like Starscream or the reason Gen 1 Jetfire was mm-hmm. changed is because of Harmony Gold. Um, they... If anything even vaguely looks like a VF1 or 
if it's a fighter plane that transforms, they've tried copywriting that. So everybody just has to try to skirt around it. I think that's kind of why I'm thinking the yeah. Bayformers kind of look so ugly. I feel like at this point, someone's got to have grounds to just lay this whole thing out in front of like a significant court of law and just get this shit sorted out. Like, there's there's no way this can go on forever where it's just this weird tangle clusterfuck of legal stuff. They need to just, they need to take it in front of the courtroom, just lay it all out, figure out who stands where, get some clear guidelines on what can happen, and just figure out who actually owns this shit. The weird part about it is they know exactly what they own. They own season one distribution rights for macros sdf macros the original what they don't own the rights to is everything else but they will stop it because they technically have macros in name so if it says macros anywhere in the name they we they have some type of legal bounds to strike it down which is bizarre and i hate it but I'm just one dude who likes Macross. I, not much you can really you're, you're do. You're one of from. a dozen fans. At least a dozen. The Facebook group really? I'm in is massive, with like, I think that there's like seven thousand people. That's in it. that's bigger than the Meta, Metabots group. <laughs> well, no shit. What the fuck is that supposed to mean for? Anything's bigger than a pebble. So we got a total of like, we got, okay, we got, we got like a thousand members. Seven point nine thousand on the Macross Fan Central, and then there is another one which is US mm. that has three thousand. Look, I, I, after I help you get justice for Macross, you need to help me get justice for Metabots. Wow. Why would I do that? I just feel like, you know, we're, we're, at, we're at... I mean, what even is Metabots? Is that like some LBX knockoff or something? You see what you did, Forge? You see what you did, Forge? really sounds like right? it. I mean, nobody's... Like, I had a Metabots game on DS, I think. And that's the last I ever heard of it until I joined your fucking Discord server. I mean, I remember this thing called Custom Robo, and that was pretty cool. I'm not going to sit uh, here maybe you're thinking of that. and be disrespected. You better lawyer up. Um, I'm coming for you, God, Forge. What? <laughs> I was at the store the other day, and I was wandering through the uh, toy section to see if they had um, any new Star Wars Black Series stuff. They didn't because people bought it all out. But I did see this thing over in the corner called Trash Bots, and I immediately <laughs> thought of you. You know what? I, I was going to take a picture of it and send it to you, but I decided against it. I'm, you know, it stays like this, Forge. It stays like this. I'll tell you what's not trash, oh, guys. The squirrel cuckoo. Do you want to learn some more about the squirrel it's cuckoo? A beautiful fucking bird. Isn't it? Look at that tail. The tail's longer than the bird itself. It's a fucking alpha male. But interestingly enough, it's not called the squirrel cuckoo because it has a long tail. It's called the squirrel cuckoo because it hops from branch to branch similarly to a squirrel. Interesting. Huh. That is interesting. It, fuck, man. That tail is fucking Isn't it like long. the tail's bigger than the bird? It's like a peacock that can fly. Hmm. Look, I didn't even notice in that preview picture. No, it's like all tail. Jesus Christ. Well, whatever makes it fly better. It's like a Pokemon. Right? Man, what if we get one of these in Gen 9? Oh, it's going to happen. We get ourselves a Squooku. No, they got to do another form of something that looks like a Squirtle but isn't. Because oh. that's what Pokemon yeah. is. It's a bunch of squirrels. Ah, yes. It normally Nothing only flies original. short distances, mainly gliding with an occasional flap. So the, so the tail probably does slow it down. Mm. Well, nat uh, natural selection is coming for it. 
Well, it eats caterpillars, and I mean, if it's on the ground, it can probably just adapt and eat worms. And then <laughs> I would, uh, it's gonna fall to the ground. As be uh, turn into the next yeah, penguin. As God intended. I don't think God would intend anything else. Flying is against the uh, laws of him. He created uh, gravity for a reason. Just like he's going to smite all of the planes. I'm looking through the entire woodpecker section, and literally every single one of these birds looks exactly the fuck the same. That's called that's called racism, to us, and uh, we don't tolerate. It's like they just that copy and racist. pasted the same picture for every single one of these birds. We don't tolerate that. They all this, look like the same dude. It's wholesome. Well, that's uh, one way to uh, get know, us right? demonetized. Fuck. All right. Yeah. So somebody's just gonna clip that and put all of them look alike, and then put it over some mm-hmm. real racy stuff. Like fucking. Gundam victory. It's like they all fucking look alike. Like over some Zaku variants. That too. Look, you really can't even claim that everything in Victory looks alike. <laughs> That's not even a valid. Literally, there's literally nothing in Victory that looks the same as anything else. No, in the Hexa, the the V dash. No, it's like everything in that show was procedurally generated. The Victory. Pretty much. Oh look, variants of a mobile suit. That's never been done before. Like, you want to tell me how many color swaps there are of the age one? There's no color swaps. None. There's no color swaps. They're all equipment variants. Yeah. The only uh, the only other difference oh, is... Oh, wow. What's a Hexa? What's, what's Hexa's a like dash? a mass produ- Hexa's produced not one. a color swap, even. It's just, it's just a head difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It's literally just made for called, different uses. If I put on a different hat, am it's I a different person? The same thing as anything else. Writing. It's not lazy. It's called yeah. being cost Whereas efficient. age, they put maximum effort, and they're like, hey, man, we understand the Gundam Age 1 is the most perfect mobile suit to exist, but we got to do something. Oh, yes, we give big hand. We yep. give big hand, and, and he slapped pee pee. Big hand slap pee pee. And it red. And then you get little legs out there, little legs trucking. Can't even see him. He's too oh, fast. Oh, God. It's- He's out there taunting the vegans. You know, he's like, you're too slow. Well, let's make Ninja Gundam with knife. Nothing else. It, it, it was never done before. I'm just going to remind because. you guys that Bandai made the exact same Gundam three times and thought we wouldn't notice. Which one? Look at the chat. I still see the uh, squirrel cuckoo. Keep that looking. That is a nice looking Gundam, though. Am I, am I scrolling up? Did I post it in the right chat? No. I just you posted it directly to me. To... I posted it directly to you. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> but yeah. Same Gundam, just three times over. Oh. You sure? Uh, pretty oh. much. How's it the same so for the people at home, the three Gundams we're referring I'll to are it. the Gundam Age One Full Glancer, the Uraven Gundam, and the Gundam Tri Age Magnum. I was gonna post it now look at those three Gundams side by side similar. and tell me they're not the exact same suit. They There's look no very way. similar. They look, look nothing alike. Yeah, so yeah, it does says me. <laughs> the only the only similarities you, is obviously the, uh, the color. Master of Age. The color, the Urban well, has ha- those same like fork things on the shoulders that the full glance it has on the arms. Yeah. And they well, I guess the full glance it doesn't have the uh clear green on the chest, but that's pretty common. The Tri Age Magnum has the same like layered of kind of full armor style armor over the top. Mm. And even the V fin on the uh Tri Age kind of looks like the Uraven's V fin. I can't subscribe to this. Well, you can't subscribe to very much. You know what you can subscribe to, though? Crosama and Channel 2S. Links in the description below. That is absolutely facts. Those you can. I'm pretty sure the only people watching this are those subscribers. (laughs) 
Yeah. No one. <laughs> that would no be one if you're guess. watching this podcast and you're not subscribed to at least one of us, please leave a comment in the description below. We want to know who. You, yeah. We want to know who you are. Like. <laughs> They're like, I just came for Argentina birds. If you can't birds. leave a comment in the description for some reason, just put it in the comment section and that works fine too. Welcome to the Macross Podcast. Featuring birds in the same Gundam three times. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. It's just fun shit. I mean, so going, yeah, we gotta go back to Macross. We, we've, we've strayed too far. But um, I would honestly say Macross Plus, although Plus and Robotech in the original series, the only things I've ever watched of um, the franchise, I-, I would just always stand by Plus being fantastic because of the um, the relationship, the the two friends that had a you know a going out and became rivals. Um, obviously, I won't spoil the ending, but uh, there was also like a little love triangle and stuff. But it, it was fantastic. Yeah, simping for an AI. I mean, that AI looked pretty pretty slamming. I mean, she could change how she looked whenever she mm-hmm. wanted, so. But she got hers at the end. Yeah. Crow, you should watch Zero. I, it's another fairly short OVA. I think it's six episodes. So when y'all posted, um, y'all posted something about it, about like a nip, I was like, oh, nips? So I decided to watch a little bit of it, and the animation looks pretty good, and there was like one particular um, uh, VF that popped up that looked actually pretty decent. Probably the VF I think that's what it was. I was like, it looks really good. It was like a darker color. You weren't even responding to that chat. You just saw Nip and went, well, that's worth a watch. Yeah. And I, I, I can't even be surprised. <laughs> like it was. I mentioned Nip because Herb was watching it and for those who don't know herb is a nice little 14 year old yeah. boy oh and speaking of nip can i just say that for some reason even though you and i can't have a video on youtube with absolutely anything even slightly offensive in it fucking ghost in the shell is fully uncensored fully uploaded and not age gated on youtube movies yeah, that's not a real nip no. it's got Motoko's fucking naked more than she's clothed in that movie, and that's totally fine. YouTube has that right up there on their site, and like, sure, it's a cool ass movie, but like, why can't I do that shit? You it, know, YouTube for y- kids. Yeah, it's like technically you can, but you have to be like artistic with it. Like, put a layer of latex over your nips, and you'd be fine. Nah, she she's bare tit for like. Yeah, but. 30% of the but movie. But it's, it's because of like it's a art, lot of the movie. You know, it's like it's it's And there's like that other android that's just like a naked torso for the entire movie. Yeah. But it, but it's, okay, Crow. I'm going to send you some real some real like Kino hentai real quick. That's all I'm asking for. You, you want to post that on you Is post this that, that manga that you channel? shared uh in Discord earlier? Oh, it could be that one if you wanted to. Cuz I looked that one up and it was it was good <clears throat> art, but as a as a as a manga it was kind of eh. It, like, the only good thing about it is the art. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how I felt say. when I looked it up. I don't even know how you found it, but... Well, you mentioned I, the guy's I, name, so it was pretty easy to oh, find. That's and true. also, I could have reverse image searched it, even if that wasn't available to me. <laughs> like, I mean, that's that some real... Good. That's some real nice yeah, art. That looked real good. Like, why would a hentai artist... Do that much. Wait, is this a hentai or is it just like... made by a hentai artist? No, it's full on. Oh, I'm watching. I'm I love reading. how it has like the little accents of like super desaturated color just to make it pop a little bit more than pure black and white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like the backgrounds are so fucking detailed. And I love the overlapping. Like the green for her skirt and ribbon, and then the little bit of red for the apple and like the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The shading. The it's just so pretty. Attention to nice um, shadowing. You don't get you don't get this quality in, in most hentai mangas. No, you don't. No, but when you see it, it's like it's good. What's what's the sauce? Oh God, what is it? I can't even remember at this point. I, can, I think I could do. I like, could just I'll run a reverse image search on yeah, it to see like, what I can find. <laughs> like through God, all things are possible. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think we've kind of ran 
our course on uh, Matt Cross Talk. We talked about merch. Um, well, not as much about merch. I mean, what was there to say? The DX line from Bandai is super expensive, but glorious in every single way. Um, they are really Couldn't find the nice. name, but I found it on some sketchy-ass Russian website. Okay. Shoju Naj- Najimi. All right. That'd be tomorrow's read. <laughs> but we also got uh, Bandai's 172 scale uh, model kits, which I've only built two, and I can honestly say the building process is chaotic. And that's that's actually putting it very lightly. Yeah, I have a couple of those on order. So those are going to be fun. I have the um, 25 armored set, which uh, oh, no. Zach did a review on mm-hmm. not too long ago. And also the um, a titanium finish or mirage coating version of the 25F. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be fun to deal with, and it's going to be fun for you. Honestly, to deal with that too. arm that armored 25 is like the one Macross thing I've seen that I actually kind of like. But it's like in, so many parts. Yeah, in Batroid mode, it's so fucking sexy with all those missile compartments open. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's a cool looking. That's a cool looking MS. Well, I mean, it's not an MS, but... It's a VF. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's a cool-looking Transformer. <laughs> I guess technically it is well, a Transformer. You're not technically wrong. You're not technically wrong. I'll give it to you. It does transform. And you know what? It's a really awesome Megazord. Hey, you're going too far. <laughs> this is yeah, going you're too right. far. It's just a mediocre Metabot. No. I fucking dare you. I don't know if that was insulting me more or Crow more. That's what so I, hey, I'm I'll, still, I'll accept it. I'm still undecided on, on who's that insulting. <laughs> All I know is VF25, pretty sexy. I got I, Actually, I'm holding it right now. Um, it's in um, fighter mode. And it's uh, there's some places that don't actually connect very tightly. Like, it's it's kind of like still has gaps, mostly in the front. Um but it's super solid. Like, I, I, no parts are falling off when I'm handling it in the uh, fighter mode. Obviously, when it goes to uh, Batroid and, you know, freaking uh, Gearwalk, it can obviously explode at that point, or even the transformation process. But as is, man, this is, like, very beautiful. Um, I kind of don't even want to display it in anything other than the fighter mode. Have you put the decals on it yet? No, because I'm, I'm going to paint it. I just, you know, everything else that's been coming up kind of, you know, maybe uh, lose track. Yeah, then I'd probably say paint it before doing a review on it. Because VFs don't look complete without, like, actual decals on them. I know, but I still want to just get the, the straight build review uh, done, and then I'll do the um, montage video. Them. Do a straight build so- and mix it in. Mm, that'd, that'd be a really long video. Well, I, well, I still yeah. need to build that cat girl thing. Yeah, you should do that. It's Macross Month 2 Electric Boogaloo, so. Yeah. I gotta do something, fuck. We gotta get started on the 120s. Do you actually have any plans for what you're doing with it? I'm just painting it normal colors. Like, I'm not gonna stray away from uh, the original design. Are you gonna use the stickers or are you gonna mask? I'm gonna decide it. I got. I gotta look or, at the the stickers again. Or are how you big are sh- the stickers for a one twentieth Macross? They're massive. Like that's gotta be like they're massive. Yeah, it's a really. Like big I sheet. think I have pictures of it somewhere. One yeah, send a pic. I gotta see this. Oh, by the way, Crow, the version of that manga that I sent you is subtitled in Russian, so you're probably not going to be able to read it. Man, so what's the point? I mean, you have the name. You could find it That's true. now. Oh, wow. Yeah, those are yeah. those are some big stickers. Victory Verka. You could, like, you could put those on your car. Mm-hmm. Very much could. Um, and then that is, on the right, is the VF Girl uh, VF... 31 anniversary. It's not 1-100. It's technically non-scale. 
Oh, okay. It has a few too many folding uh, stickers on it. Mm. Which is my biggest complaint with it. Speaking of complaints, hey, Crow. Yep. Uh, when's that victory review? Uh, I already posted in the, um, the Discord. I'm, I'm doing it, uh, I'm, I'm going to do it tomorrow and, like, throughout the week. But that's, like, Did, the next review coming out. And I think you're not painting the red on the arms until you actually get around to proper painting it then? Yeah, so, like, the, the review itself isn't going to have, like, the stickers and all that. It's just okay. going to be plain. Yeah, but when I do sense. paint it, it's going to have the red on it. That's good. And speaking of complaints, you know what I don't like about Macross? I really don't like it when mecha anime have, like, one singular mecha design that they use for the show. Where it's like every single person has, like, the same mecha, but with, like, a blue stripe on its arm. Or the same mecha, but, like, the eyes are a different shape. Like, Macross does it. There's, like, a lot of, like, kind of C-list mecha shows where they just rely on, like, one or two mecha designs, and that just annoys me so much. Like, it's... A, I just... I like to see, like, lots of good mecha designs. Like Gundam. You have the Gundam, the Zaku, the Dom, the Goof, the Gelgoog, all in the show, and they all look great. And then you have something like Macross that's, like, the VF-1, the VF-1 with a different colored stripe, the VF-1 with missiles, the VF-1, the VF-1, and if you're lucky, you might even see a VF-1. And it's, like... I'm not a fan of that. Frontier probably has the most variation, because the main character starts off in a 25, then he gets shot down in that, then he gets a VF-30-something? Or is it a 27? I don't remember. The enemy's pilot... No, the enemy's pilot 27s, and then he gets a VF-171. Like, he's all over the place. There's all sorts of shit going on. (laughs) <laughs> okay, 2S, I, I get it. Um, uh, many planes, uh, big, get shot down, more. No, that's it. <laughs> I was talking about it in reference to the link, not to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't see the link, I was just like, alright, I'll play your game. Two. Also, when it comes to American, you can literally not have enough detail when talking about military technology. So, uh, checkmate. I guess that's true. But then again, Americans are dumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we do love our military tech. We do. I will say that. I mean, if you can't have an F-22 chilling out in your driveway, why even live? I mean, we can't. Not yet, at least. Not until they're discontinued. The last one got shipped out in 2012. Like, as in from military use like you can buy an f-16 but you can't get an f-18 yet because i'm pretty sure there is still some being used can you get an a-10 oh god i i actually haven't looked you might be able to because they're so old i kind of want an a-10 i know you can get a blackhawk and an ac-130 are we about to buy it are we about to buy an A10 on eBay? Oh, you can't Jeez. find them on eBay. It's there. We just fucking pull together our hobby funds. Buy the Crowcast A10. <laughs> just we like we print the link to the podcast on the under, underside of the wings and just fly it around for promotion. I think that this is a model plane for five and a half grand. Well, I mean, if it's the real plane, get on that shit. That's a good deal. Mm-hmm. God, I wish. Um, how much? Well, they're only eighteen point eight million per unit. Yeah, these are all these are all model kits. That's lame. You also gotta look at your state's regulation on um, having an aircraft. Well, no, you can buy an F sixteen anyway. I'm in Maine. We have no regulation. Damn it. My, my freaking VF-25, I took it off the stand, and I have no idea how to put it back on the stand. Ugh, small brain. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't make the stand, like, adapter so complicated. Hey, Crow, I don't think I'm going to have the uh, the 120 VF-1 done by the end of the month. Oh, I, I'm not even expecting myself to 
even open the box again <laughs> until like the end of the month. Oh, well, that's fair. I I do want to do like a uh, test fit of everything with like tape and stuff mm-hmm. holding it together just to see like how big it is and get everything measured up. But I don't want to proper like glue anything yet. Oh yeah. So someone in the Quora thread about buying an A10 made a valid point that even if you could, they would have to strip out the minigun, and the minigun is basically the core of the plane, so it'd be so unbalanced and screwed up that you would be basically it would be basically unusable without the weapon. Interesting. That is pretty lame. Although they say that you have to do that. But in Florida you can buy a fully armed F sixteen. Nice. So I mean I don't know who's gonna buy a fully armed f-16 complete with like the full-on radar i'm gonna go stuff. on ebay right now and look for f-16 it's not on ebay it's on some uh oh god it's some like blue angel site or something f-16 sale all right i'm, I'm oh, done shit. trying to mess with this damn vf-25 bro broke it no, it's actually pretty sturdy with me like kind of semi manhandling it, but I just can't figure out how how it went on to this stand adapter. One sold last year for eight and a half yeah. million. See, it's not even that expensive. Yeah, I mean, there's houses that cost more than that. You could live in a mansion in L.A. or you could I, live, I in an live in an F16. I would rather live in an F16, to be honest. Honestly, yeah. I can just, we can live like yeah. Kings. You can just fly everywhere, and then you can really like you could start a whole ass war by just flying over Russia. <laughs> <laughs> like Florida man flies over Russia, starts World War Three. <laughs> as God intended. As God intended. Florida's always out there to fuck with us. So. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, okay. I have to conclude this show, guys. It's lunchtime. Lunchtime for the yeah. crow. Gotta start. Yeah, you know, gotta start picking at the ground. <laughs> yeah, I should prob. I might grab yeah, something to eat before I go to bed. Yeah. All right. Uh, <clears throat> well, I um, you know, in summary. I definitely encourage people to go out there and, and at least attempt to try uh, Macross. Um, I personally would say go with um, go with Plus. Um, what say you, 2S? I mean, I think Plus looks super cool. Like, I first of all, I absolutely love like those like '90s sci-fi anime, like anime OVAs, like the really like that. That era of animation is just so fucking beautiful. So even if I find the show completely disinteresting, just for the eye candy alone, I want to see it. Mm. I'll just say, um, I always recommend starting in proper order with, like, SDF. I think that it's a really good show. Doesn't go on too long. If you discount the um, epilogue, it's 25 episodes. 26, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you recommended that well, I, I started you with Do You Remember all Love? Of SDF Macross. Of course not. So, that's yeah, too I told much, you. That's too I much told to you watch. Do You Remember Love. <laughs> so, you don't always recommend that people start in too, chronological order. If you're too lazy to watch the entire show, watch Do You Remember Love. And, and then watch Plus, because Plus is pretty much a sequel to um, SDF. But. Really, there's no set order right, for everything. Cool. It all takes place in far enough parts away from each other. All that you're missing are like references to certain events or people. Doesn't really matter. They're all good except for seven. <laughs> That's my conclusion. All right, we'll take your word on it. <clears throat> so, hey, you got your list of uh of shows to watch, guys. You know, there's different areas. I know um, SDF is on uh, Amazon still, so you could check that out. It's also all on YouTube, except for uh, Plus is missing episodes <clears throat> three, four, or two. Three, it wasn't available four. for me. It's not available in my country, so I have to get a VPN. Yeah. yeah Ooh, we need a VPN sponsor for the podcast. We do. Hey, NordVPN, man. Holla. Get Nord. Holla at your boy. 
<laughs> Nord Express, <laughs> Tunnel Bear, Surf Shark, anyone. Honestly, anyone at this point. Mm. We need, we need a sponsor. Well, like actually, yeah, real emails. talk. We need like a legit sponsor for the channel, <laughs> or not for the channel, but for the podcast. Yeah. Because like we have a new type, and that's cool and all. But we need like a we need like a real podcast sponsor. Mm. Bridge wallets. <laughs> if you if you want to get you know pictures of Argentinian birds, and you want to store them. On person, you get a ridge wallet. Oh, Maybe absolutely! Display. I know. I don't. I never leave home without my three by three printout of a squirrel cuckoo. As God intended. Squirrel cuckoos are pretty hot, though. Sometimes I go to the bar and they ask me for my ID, and I just whip out my squirrel cuckoo, and the bartender says, "Understandable," and pours me my drink. <laughs> Girls over there, did you see the size of his tail? <laughs> <sighs> all right guys well that's it so awesome uh you know return back to uh, the podcast and uh awesome special guest with forge um forge do you do you have any like social media outlets you want to you know throw out there um i really don't use anything besides discord like everybody knows my fucking facebook account mm-hmm. i guess like I don't know how that got out there. I definitely didn't dox myself three times <laughs> this week. Um, I know I've posted my full address at least twice in the past. I seven feel days. like we. Got, I got to mention that he like he posted like a Facebook conversation and he like blacked out his name at like a forty-five degree angle. So like seventy percent of the name is still visible. It's like one of I those. I just don't care. It's like one of those. Like, hen, it's like one of those hentai dojins where they like they technically have to censor it, so they put like a tiny little bar across the tip, but like you can still see everything anyways. I gave up once I started posting messages on um, in Facebook Gundam groups, and Dipper started messaging me, being like, "Dude, they don't have it. <laughs> Shut up." And I'm like, "How the fuck did you figure out who I am?" I, I don't understand this. So then I just deleted all my personal information off my Facebook account, and I'm just like, there's mm. my name. And that's that. All right, well, if you want to catch Forge, um, he's on, like, almost every single Discord server in relation to, like, freaking anime shit. So you'll probably find him somewhere. In terms of Gunpla, I'm on... 2S, mine. Uh, Crow Server, 2S, Mechagai Kotsu, UC Gundam, um, and I think that's about it. Oh, I'm yeah, you're basically the Gunpla's, owner of the Mechagai Kotsu server, aren't you? Uh, pretty much. I've been trying to get him to message me back on by like any means necessary, because he went out there and he's just like, I announced a contest on Mechagai Kotsu's server, and he sent me a DM being like, Hey, dude, I want in. Let me pay, f- like, either I could cover all the costs, or we could double the, the amount. And he's just like, Hey, we could double the amount. I want to put some stuff into this, because fuck Crow, I guess. Um, so, and then I'm just like, okay, so by this date, we're going to announce everything. And I haven't heard a word from him since. <laughs> So I have no clue whether or not he's actually going to pay into the contest or not. So that's fun. Hmm. Trying to work all that out. Wow, imagine ghosting uh, your own Discord server. I know, right? I was wondering why I haven't heard any uh, I mean, word he about it. What's he going to do next? Not upload to his channel for four months? I don't know. All I know is that the prize pool, I think, was originally 175 when I was doing it, and now it is 350 So, if I don't hear back from him by, what is it, the 16th, I get to shell that all out myself. Fun mm-hmm. days. Shit. Yep. So, so the contest ends on the 16th. Uh, the submission deadline is the 11th, but it's only for people on the Mecha Guy Kotsu gotcha. server. If you want in, like you got something, and you think you can get it done within the next fucking week and a half, feel free to DM me. I, I'll give you an invite, and that's mm. that. I'll, I'll have to get my uh, Massacre EX done before then. Oh, man. 
sometime we should do oh, like no. like a 48 hour gumpla contest like a speed thing like one of those uh game development competitions oh, yeah. where they give you like 48 hours to come up with something that'd be pretty nice we should do that but then invite all of the like japanese builders and korean builders and then just have them completely shit on us within like 12 mm -hmm. minutes they just like scratch build it out of like putty and plot plate in like 12 hours <laughs> That's what they do, because that's what they do. Like, how long did it take after the Massacred Barbatos came out to see, like, full-on customs? Like, RG Ava 1 comes out, and, like, the next day someone's done, like, a whole-ass diorama for Ava 2. Yeah. It, it's it, It's insane. normally just, like, a, a three- or four-day turnaround, and you're seeing some wild fucking customs already. But It's some good shit. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all for uh, for hopping on. Um, you know, glad to glad to be doing this thing again. And two S, we gotta we gotta come up with a game plan to continue this this train. Yes, we do. But thanks yeah, everyone for fun. watching. Um, you know, once again, check out newtypehq.com. Do that slash Where crow. Uh, do that slash two S, oh, okay. and you know, get yourself some ten percent off products. Neither of those are the affiliate links for either of us, but okay. I mean, you should have heard in the beginning. You ain't catching the shit late. Um, but, yeah, the affiliate, affiliate links would be in the description down below. So check it out. Um, and thanks once again for Forge coming on and uh, schooling us on some Macross goodness. Right. Yeah, it's been fun. All right, guys. Y'all have a great day. Take care, guys. Yep. Talk to you later.